In this video we will take a look at a program that can be used to integrate JetGPT into Kali Linux, namely ShellGPT. ShellGPT can be used to convert our natural language into shell commands, that is, JetGPT interprets our requests and generates suitable commands from them. In addition, ShellGPT can explain error messages and program outputs to us. Since the API of OpenAI is used in the background, you need an API key to use ShellGPT. I've already created a video explaining how to create an OpenAI API key. You can find the video in the video description down below. We will now take care of the setup that is necessary to use ShellGPT in Kali Linux. First, JQ is needed. JQ is a powerful and flexible tool for processing JSON data in a Linux environment. It allows users to parse, filter and query JSON data from various sources. To install JQ, enter the command sudo apt install jq. Next, we generate an API key in the OpenAI dashboard, which we use only for ShellGPT and which we appropriately name ShellGPT. Copy the freshly generated API key to a safe place that you can find later. Now we will install ShellGPT. Since it is a Python program, we use the following command for it. pip install shell-gpt. After everything has been downloaded and installed successfully, cd into the directory .local bin. There we will start sgpt using the command python sgpt. Now we are prompted to enter an API key. For this, we used the API key generated earlier specifically for shellgpt. Now we can start shellgpt and pass a prompt in form of a string. For example, we can say Python sgpt hello. ShellGPT responds to us as follows. Hello, how can I assist you today? If you don't want to go to the .local slash bin directory every time you want to start ShellGPT using the Python sgpt command, you can put the directories where the Python binaries and ShellGPT are located in the path environment variable. You can do this using the export command followed by path an equal sign dollar $path, that means we start with the current value of the path variable, the location of shellgpt, that is the sgpt binary, followed by the location of the Python 3 binaries. Now within the same terminal session, you can start shellgpt from anywhere using the command sgpt. If you want to be able to call shellgpt directly using the sgpt command, not only within a terminal session, but at every reboot, you have to persist the changes in the environment variable. To do this, open the bashrc file with nano. At the bottom of this file, enter the command you use to export the path environment variable. To make the changes also effective in the current terminal session, use the command source bashrc. Now let's take a look at how shellgpt basically works. A shellgpt command is structured as follows. With sgpt we start shellgpt. This is followed by an option. We focus on the two options dash dash chat and dash dash shell. With dash dash chat a chat is defined to which one can refer again later. This is especially interesting if you want to process several tasks simultaneously in one session and define prompts with different technical focuses. If you want to perform an nmap scan with ChatGPT as part of the reconnaissance and correct passwords with hashcat in parallel, you can define two different chats with sgpt chat nmap and sgpt chat hashcat and assign the prompts accordingly. With dash dash shell, shellgpt is told that the user wants to generate a shell command with the following prompt. If this option is missing, then the usual chatgpt text generation occurs. So you don't get a shell command then, but a wall of text generated by chatgpt, as you might have already recognized if you ask a simple question. Suppose you want to scan the target system 10.0.2.17 with nmap and you have no idea how to do this yet. 
then you can already use shellgpt to generate a suitable command for this. sgpt dash dash shell to say we want to have a shell command and afterwards as a string scan the target 10.0.2.17. Since we use the dash dash shell parameter, shellgpt knows that a shell command should be generated and adjusts the background prompts sent to the language model via OpenAI's API accordingly. The results look something like this, nmap-sv 10.0.2.17. By default, the commands generated by shellgpt are colored purple. Below that, three more options appear, execute, describe, and abort. The user can now decide whether to execute the generated command, have it explained, or cancel the operation. We decide to describe what exactly the command does and get the following response. This command uses the nmap tool to scan the specified IP address 10.0.2.17 and determine the version of the services running on it. Below that, the three options appear again. Since we don't know that much about nmap yet and the explanation doesn't give us any clue as to whether or not we are allowed to do this, we abort the process. Okay, that was a very short introduction to how to set up ShellGPT and how to use it. We will use ShellGPT quite often within my video series Ethical Hacking with ChatGPT. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.